What's up, everybody? Welcome back to H and J Talk Sports. It's Monday, July twelfth. I'm Joe. That's Harry. Here we go. Harry, what's up? What's going on? Eventful weekend. Eventful weekend. I uh, hope you guys watched the fight. Uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Uh, but before we get into anything, before we get into anything, guys, a hundred subs by football season. We only got twenty five to go. So if you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet, listen, do us a favor and go subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when we get new videos up. We got new videos, podcasts every Monday, new videos all week. You definitely want to stick around. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, HA Talk Sports. And that's just what it is. Uh, so, Harry, you ready to get into some show? Get into it. There's not a lot to talk about this week, uh, but I guess one big topic has been Big Ben. Uh, he's been in the news a lot for several reasons this week. Um, the most interesting one is apparently Big Ben has a tell uh, that tells if he's going to pass or run, and it was discovered by a TikToker. Hmm? <laughs> Which I guess is, you know, TikTok is, runs the nation now, apparently. Everybody, everybody's on there now. It's the new hot thing, I guess. It's a new hot thing for these kids. His name is uh, at Theo Ash NFL. So NFL's in his name. So I guess he does do NFL videos. But uh, man, you got to be looking. <laughs> I'm just saying, we watch the Steelers every year. You got to be looking really close. Like, I don't know if he's looking for tells, if that's actively what he was doing. Uh, I think it would be pretty hard to passively discover that. He's been playing for a while. I'm surprised yeah. it's coming out just now. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we don't know. The Steelers obviously started 11 and 0 last year and then collapsed. There's a lot of reasons for that, but now that we know there's a tell, could that have been one of the reasons? Maybe. Maybe some other teams have picked up on it. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys haven't seen the video, I suggest you go watch it. I'm sure you Google it. It's everywhere. It's all over sports news next week. Apparently when Ben's in the shotgun, uh, if his back heel is up, that indicates it's going to be a passing play. And if his back heel is flat, that indicates it's going to be a run play. Now, apparently this is only works if he's in the gun, but the Steelers were the third highest team coming out of the gun last season. 83% of their plays came out of the gun. So that's pretty significant if another team or teams picked up on that. Yeah, that's... Uh... I know it's interesting. I feel like something like that would have been noticed a long time ago. Mm-hmm. That doesn't seem too discreet. It seems pretty. Could have uh, been new since he came back. Um, I mean, obviously, if it was noticed before, it hasn't affected much, right? Yeah, Until this season, so. if that did have something to do with it. I mean, you got to think. <sighs> it did seem like after the eleventh week that teams were really stuffing the run. Now, were they predicting that? Was the line so bad? Was the run game so bad? Was it a combination of things? Maybe. Let's see. We'll see. Maybe James Conner will have a breakout now because uh, of all this stuff. I don't know. But Beth, I don't know. It's hard to say. Let's see. I don't think it. I don't know. Well, one thing we know now, whether or not teams knew last year, they know now. <laughs> yeah, so it's, he'll have to adjust like, it. But that that yeah. seems like an easy adjustment. Well, it does, except if you've been a quarterback and you have a routine and a pattern and your body's been going through the same motions for, you know, how many ever seasons, then it may not be so easy. It's easy in practice, but when you're in the heat of the moment and thinking about so many other things, you're reading the defense, you're directing the plays. It's almost like he's been doing this so long, his brain's in autopilot. So is it that easy to fix? Um, I don't know. Put time. He's got the whole training camp to do it. I think he'll figure it out. Different game situation, though. Maybe not go out of the gun so much. I don't know. And we got a new offensive coordinator. So uh, I'm sure it'll be addressed. Yeah. Uh, but very interesting. Uh, also, NFL teams, if you didn't notice this, maybe you should go hire the TikTok kid because obviously <laughs> he's, he's paying very close attention to people's feet. Yeah. Uh, someone give him a job. Preferably- Use it to your advantage the first game. Surprise somebody. Yeah. So watching it. Yeah. There you go. Uh, more Big Ben news separate from this. 
He's been getting, I mean, Steelers have been getting hate all off season. It's just, it's the season of hating the Steelers. It really is national media. Uh, a former GM, I'm not going to mention names. Obviously, he was a trash GM. He didn't do anything. I'll say that. <laughs> he went on to say he thinks Ben Roethlisberger's career is over. He'll be pulled before the end of the season. Um, he'll be benched. A lot of media people have echoed that statement. What do you think? Um, that's tough. He's getting up there. He could. I mean, I want to say as a fan that he's still got it mm -hmm. he'll play the whole season but he's definitely more prone to injury um i don't think his play was too terrible last year i think yeah it was more it was more of a result of just the offense and what was around him and injuries but that's what i'll say to people did you watch last season i mean people when you talk about last season everyone just focuses on those last few games and obviously the disappointing playoff game but the Steelers did go 11 and 0. That's not easy to do. You don't go 11 and 0 by accident in the NFL. It doesn't happen. And I also don't think you have anybody behind him that's going to be Yeah, I mean we've talked about Dwayne put the Hansen pressure on him like that. Being good. Uh, but I just think knowing the Steelers, knowing Tomlin, knowing how they do their business, I don't think Ben gets pulled unless it's so bad, which I don't think it is. Last year watching Ben, he was obviously not himself. I saw him underthrow a lot of passes. He doesn't have the army used to. But the Steelers went 11 and 0. And it wasn't just because of the defense. They were blowing out teams. They were putting up 30, 28 points a game. In the prior year when Mason Rudolph was playing, when Ben was hurt, a lot of the games they won, I can't remember who it was against. It might have been the Browns or somebody. One of the games we won because we had no touchdowns, but we had six field goals and a turnover on D. That's how we were winning games <laughs> without Ben. That was a defensive win. Last year, it was a combination of the defense and Ben because there was no run game. The line wasn't good. So I don't know how – I just don't know, understand how you knock him if you've actually watched the Steelers and yeah, understood I mean, what happened last season. We saw what it was like the season before without him. Yeah. So – there was not much threat. Uh, yeah. We're realistic. We know he's not what he used to be, but I think he's still one of the top quarterbacks in the division. I don't think how you can argue against that. Show me the numbers. They're not there. Yeah. Maybe they will be after this season, but not yet. All right. Next, the big fight last night, UFC 264. In your opinion, did it live up to the hype? Uh, it was okay. No, let's say no. It was a disappointing end. I the end. Uh, yeah. What happened to McGregor? I mean, I th thought he was losing anyways, but mm -hmm. that that's you don't want to see it end on an injury. It kind of gives an excuse, gives a what if. I think the fight of the night may have been the first fight on the card. <laughs> that was a good one. I that was really good. So we'll go through this. Uh, the first fight, Sean O'Malley. Chris Motihino. Uh, we both picked a Mali. He won, but Jesus Christ, I've never seen anyone take that much damage and keep moving forward in my entire life. It was walking through it. I didn't want to see it get stopped the way it got stopped. I thought that was, and Herb Dean's usually one of the best. I thought that was very unfortunate. With If you're going to stop it like that, I wish they would have done it at the beginning of the round or a round ago. I don't yeah. see any difference letting him finish that 30 seconds than what went on the rest of the entire fight. I agree. You got to let the guy had, had endured so much, taken yeah. so many, so much punches. He wasn't even down. He was no, still up. He was still up. And I, I see the reasoning behind it. Cause I was thinking the same thing. Like, Jesus Christ, this guy's probably got so much head trauma. He's just brain dead at this point, walking through it. But with 30 seconds left, if you're going to let it go that long, you right. got to let him finish right there. Yeah. If it was the beginning of the round. Okay. I could see that. Yeah. You don't want him to endure five minutes of that four more minutes yeah, there could that. have been but, uh, plenty other moments that you could have done 30 that. seconds left and a guy's still standing he's still fighting back he's not it's not like he's out on his feet mm -hmm. he was still trying to throw you gotta let him finish that was disappointing yeah but well let's not undercut sean o'malley obviously he was the way better fighter his technical his speed i mean he was hitting at will <laughs> like it was a it was a punching bag 
So you got to give credit to Matahino for pretty much just being a punching bag and not flinching. Like well, how you take he, that many gut shots and just walk through it. I don't he know. He had some bursts in the first round, and I think he he started picking up that this guy's taking these hits. Yeah. And then he started pacing himself mm -hmm. after that because he knew it's that exhausting was, too. Like he never let up. It was constant. Like backing up and avoiding that much is a tiring. It's just it was smart as giving the damage. <laughs> it was smart because you don't want to empty the gas tank and then the guy's still there and you, you know. Yeah. You have to still fight two more rounds, three more rounds. Mm -hmm. worn out uh yeah but you know i think everyone is going to be excited to see that guy fight again yeah i hope he doesn't take as much damage next time because that can't be good for you and for sean o'malley you got to think now like we talked about last show he's got to fight someone ranked after this right huh? yeah you got to quit quit giving him these opponents you got to get him somebody in the top 15 somebody at least 15 exactly you want to give him Kind of a a ranked guy that's tough on his way up. Give him Cheeto Vera, mm -hmm. give him that rematch, or, or give him somebody in the top ten. I mean, obviously his skill level was way out of this guy's league. Been so there. Got to fight the, someone better. The UFC is just building him up. Yeah. Uh, next fight, <coughs> Reno Donna, Yana Kutsi. I still don't know how to say that name. Uh, I'm just gonna avoid Kutsiana. it. There you go. Uh, Aldana won. Uh, round one, pretty convincing. Uh, she knocked her down. Uh, we didn't know much about that fight. Um, Aldana is obviously a pretty good fighter. I mean, I feel like she had good technique. I think she could be, you know, the tops of these divisions. She came in pretty, she came in very overweight. She was 139. Was she overweight? Mm -hmm. I they mean, were fighting at 135. Overweight, so you always look at that and it's like, Kind that of an could play advantage, but yeah. technically she looked a lot better. Yeah, she looks like she has potential, but she could be big in the division. So we'll see more from her. Ty Tuvasa and Greg Hardy. Uh, my prediction for this was Greg Hardy. I hated that prediction as soon as <laughs> I made it. <laughs> I wish I would have picked Tuvasa. Uh, man, that was a short but freaking exciting fight. Yeah, it was good. Really good. They both got a little wobbly. Both got a little rocked. Yeah, that was uh, Greg Hardy rocked him, and he went in for the finish, and he just kind of missed and set Tuvasa up for the big knockout. Yeah, Tuvasa stopped him cold. Teed up on him, and he went down, and he was mm -hmm. – didn't want any more of that. Don't jump on me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Tuvasa, he's, he's ready to fight some ranked fighters. Yeah, he's, he's good. His personality's electric. Everyone loves him. This guy's going to be a huge star in the division. He was going up before, and then he took some losses. Uh, yeah, he's got. I think he's been working on some of the weak parts of his game. Yeah, I and think he talked about last night his better. ground game. He's been working on. Yeah, he's been training with DC and mm -hmm. AKA. <laughs> he's, he's getting big, better. Big future for him, I think. We're going to see big things from Tai Tuvasa. Uh, Greg Hardy. I don't know. He's not a fan favorite. <laughs> Obviously, he has controversial history. Uh, he's lost a few fights now. He's seven and four. Mm -hmm. uh, he could not have too many more fights left in him in the UFC. Um, yeah, he might be one, one, maybe two at most away from getting cut. Yeah, one more loss. I think you might see him in Bellator or something. He's, uh, he's a great athlete. He just got into the game too late. Yeah. And I think that's hurting him now. It's it's hard to make up all that time on these guys that have been fighting their whole life. It is. It's not. I mean, people, I think a lot of these athletes think I'm athletic. I'm strong. I'm going to go punch these guys. It's very technical, guys. Athleticism, especially in the heavyweight division, strength can get you pretty far because obviously you can knock, Greg Hardy can knock someone out with one punch. But I mean, we saw last night, you missed your opportunity and it's over. In the heavyweight division, all these guys can knock out with yeah, one punch. Exactly. <laughs> so he missed his shot, and then Ty yeah. Voss is set up perfectly to counter that. Yeah. Uh, the next fight, last week I said, man, I think this is going to be a bloodbath, one of the fights of the night. Obviously, it was not. It was kind of boring. It was very technical. Not to say it wasn't a good fight. Uh, Gilbert Burns, who I predicted to win, won. So I'm happy. Um, 
think me and Harry actually tied this time, right? On our picks, yeah. Uh, what do you think of the fight, Harry? I was going. I thought it would be. I thought Thompson was going to win. I th- I know a lot. Of, mm, it was a good fight. It was technical. I thought I liked Thompson. I thought maybe he could keep it standing, but he, mm-hmm. he wasn't. There was a power difference. Technical difference on the ground was pretty significant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Thompson's getting older. I think that was his last title shot run. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be back in that picture again. I was surprised how one-sided it was. Uh, Gilbert really controlled the ground game. Maybe Thompson just wasn't a good matchup for him, honestly. Um, people talk a lot about his kind of quirky, weird style, gives guys troubles. But once Gilbert Burns got grappled with him, it was over. He really controlled the whole fight. Yeah, his jiu-jitsu is on another level, and he was able to put him down and hurt him. And not to mention, he's he's stronger and he's faster. So yeah, it plays it played into the stand up as well. So what's next for Burns? It didn't sound like he wants Usman anytime soon in his post fight interview. So he's not uh, looking for a title anytime soon. He knows he's not up next. Yeah, uh, I don't. He needs a top guy, top five guy. I think if he wins that, then he's right, he's back in the conversation. Yeah. Maybe whoever doesn't get that title fight between Edwards and Colby, Colby. you can fight one of them. Mm-hmm. Or maybe Masvidal, he's talking about him. Or if he yeah. wants the money fight, Diaz. But one of those guys, I think. Masvidal is interesting, but maybe we'll talk about that on another show. That'd be an interesting fight. I'd rather yeah. see Masvidal and Edwards. Yeah, I don't know if uh, the style of Burns and Masvidal would make for a good fight, honestly. I think it, it could be a lot like Usman mm-hmm. and Masvidal. Yeah. Uh, fight of the night on paper. Poirier McGregor. <laughs> Man, unfortunate ending. Boy, we've seen a lot of broken legs lately. Jesus Christ. Uh, like, almost every fight, <laughs> someone snaps their leg in half. Every card. Hmm? Those uh, those calf kicks and stuff are becoming a lot more popular. People are losing them a lot more, and I think mm-hmm. people are also learning how to defend them and check them. And I think that's the problem. I think I lean more towards the side that his kick got checked, yeah, and it cracked it, and then when something he had back to crack, on, it didn't just break. <laughs> I'm stepping yeah. back. They showed the replay later on, and I think it, he got checked. He hit him right on the knee. Yeah, I think that's what hurt it, and then later on, it finally. Gave through. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, there's been a lot of different takes from this. Uh, Joe Rogan said he thought Connor did very good. He disagreed with a lot of takes that said Connor didn't do good. Uh, obviously, a lot of people think Connor needs a rematch now. To me, it looked like Poirier all the way. Mm-hmm. I don't think there was any way Connor was winning that fight, even if that didn't happen. Agree. Poirier, I think he weathered the storm. I think McGregor tried really hard in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I think he even gassed himself out after he did the guillotine. And Mm -hmm. then Poirier was just on top, raining down. It was the the judges' scorecards after the first, there was a 10 9 and two 10 8s. So Connor looked helpless on the ground. He had no defense. No. You're obviously not good enough to submit uh, Poirier. And then. I mean, he was just getting pounded and he couldn't get out of it. And he looked like the last fight where he couldn't do anything. Or the Khabib fight, honestly. Once he was on the ground, it looked like that's it. I think if he wasn't McGregor, that fight would have been stopped at the end of the first. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like that. As fast as Herb Dean stopped the earlier one, he was waiting, so we got another round. Because he was getting pummeled at the end of that. He was just getting pounded. And uh, Mm -hmm. because he's McGregor, they didn't stop that fight. Yeah, they wanted to get two rounds. uh, But... I didn't even see the break when it happened. I mean, I thought he just rolled his ankle a little bit. Yeah, I didn't notice it. I didn't notice it until after. It looked like he fell back. I thought he took a punch, honestly. I thought he got rocked Uh, because I think he got hit lightly or something. When he went down, I was like, did he get hit that hard? Uh, I saw his foot kind of move, and I thought he just rolled it and went down. But I didn't even see the foot. I just thought he got caught. And he kind of took him off. I was like, boy, he looked like he took more damage on that punch than it was. <laughs> but no, 
They showed that replay 5,000 times. Yeah, when he couldn't get back up, I, I kind of saw that it was broken. So. Yeah. Uh, I guess the biggest part of this fight was the post fight. Connor with his broken ankle talking mad shit. Poirier does not like him. Poirier does not like him. <laughs> A lot of animosity. Uh, Poirier is all about it because he knows it's easy money now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what people have been saying. It's easy money for him. I mean, obviously, he's at a different level now. It's not McGregor's, not what he used to be, but he's still the biggest money fight in the UFC. So for Poirier, I guess that's an easy fight to take. Plus, he doesn't like him. He would love to pound his face some more. I don't think McGregor's a threat to him anymore. McGregor's going to take the fight, which is going to be very bad for his legacy, I think. If you're McGregor, and I know he won't do this, you take the Nate Diaz fight, and then you go fight a Paul brother for a bag of money. And then you talk your shit, and for the rest of your life, you can talk about how Poirier got lucky I snapped my ankle. For the rest of your life, you can talk that shit. And even though we may think you're wrong, no one can say anything. But if you go in that ring again and he beats your ass, there's nothing you can say. And then you've dropped five fights in a row. He's going to get that, – that's their excuse to give him a title shot. It is. Poirier they wins. want it. Dana wants the money. Dana, if it was any other fighter, there's no way he'd get another shot at Poirier. I don't care. But Dana knows. Dana wants that. He still sells out the arena. <laughs> He's still the biggest fight. It, it had a big fight feel. It did. I mean, it was a huge fight. It was buildup. But if you're McGregor, don't do it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> It's going to mess things up for you, man. You're considered one of the greatest of all time. You don't want to drop three fights in a row to Poirier to end your career. He's got much. So he's lost five out of six. Yeah, yeah. Six out of seven not, doesn't make that big of a difference anymore. <laughs> I think it does. Because you can, like I said, if you're Connor and you're a retire and you're on an island somewhere with your money, for the rest of your life, you can talk shit about how, oh, if I didn't break my ankle, it was that. We some of us know that bullshit, but no one can say anything. But if you fight again and you lose, you can't say anything. That's it. So we'll see. Yeah, that's our show today, Harry. Did you have fun? It was a fun time as always. Fun time as always. I hope you guys had fun. We had fun. Uh, again, we're looking for those hundred subs on YouTube, guys. Go subscribe. Get us up to a hundred. Twenty five more to go at the time of recording this episode. Uh, follow us on social media HJ Talk Sports Twitter and Instagram guys we'll catch you next time see you <laughs>